Aloha and welcome to Rotary in Hawaii, people of action. <clears throat> Rotary came to Hawaii more than a hundred years ago, but that doesn't mean that we're an old organization. We have Rotarians in 52 organizations or clubs in the state of Hawaii that are continually innovating service and uh, events throughout the state. And we're here today with the president of the Rotary Club of Waikiki, Stephen Morgan. Good morning, Stephen. How are you today? Good morning, Wynn. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. <clears throat> you know, um, I think I'd first like to hear a little bit about you and uh, what you do in life and uh, how you came to be a Rotarian uh, in the Rotary Club of Waikiki. Oh, well, uh, let's see. It all started when I was a little kid. I'm just kidding. Um, I was born and raised on Oahu. Okay. Um, went to school here. I went to, graduated from McKinley High School. Uh, then moved to California for a little while and then um, did different jobs here and there. And then I started working for this interior designer in the mainland and uh, doing fancy fill finishes and big houses everywhere. And then one year I moved back to, uh, came back to visit and I noticed that none, there wasn't any of the houses that had any of this. So I came back and started my business as a full finish painter. And then um, my mother uh, is started the Rotary Club of Kahala Sunrise. Oh. So I've been uh, kind of in and out of Rotary throughout my life, but I never really understood what Rotary was until I got involved with it. So I became the designated volunteer for the Rotary Club of Kahala Sunrise and then, you know, helping out with all of their community service projects and then eventually became a member of that club. And then um, throughout the years, uh, became the community service director through that club and started directing all of the community service projects that they did. And then um, eventually moved to the Rotary Club of Waikiki. I've been with the Rotary Club of Waikiki now for, uh, I think, six years. Wow. Yeah. So you've had a lot of experience in Rotary from the time that you were a, a young man all the way till, till now. Right. Um, Tell me about some of your, your experiences in the Rotary Club uh, uh, of Waikiki, uh, or even Kahala Sunrise for that matter, because uh, we do have a lot of organizations within the state. Um, it's just giving back to the community. Um, I never really understood what Rotary was, um, you know, growing up, you know, it's, it's always, you know, thinking about yourself and then, you know, not thinking about others. But then, you know, once you get involved and you start doing the projects and you realize that you get much more by giving back than from taking from the community. That's cool. Ab absolutely. <clears throat> so um, let's let's talk a little bit more about the Rotary Club of Waikiki. When? When was the Rotary Club of Waikiki founded? Uh, Rotary Club of Waikiki was founded in 1939. Um, and this year we're actually turning 80. And in June we will have our 80th anniversary party. And some of your signature projects, some of the signature things that you do? And maybe you can just go through a quick list of, of some of the items and then we'll go back and talk about them individually. Uh, let's see, we'll, to date we've done 24 community service projects uh, this year. Uh, we do a lot of uh, literacy projects. We do a lot of annual projects that we, we, we do. Um, starting off the year, we do a uh, annual school supply drive where we collect uh, school supplies and, mon and money. Uh, and we use that money to purchase backpacks where we fill the, s fill the backpacks with the school supplies that we collect. And those get donated to the homeless shelters and other homeless outreach services to get to the kids the supplies that they need and then also um, we do um, a lot of uh, other literacy projects uh, we do a books for kids project uh, where we donate hardcover books to the entire schools uh, I think to this year we've done six schools so far where we give them the entire school um, hardcover books um, also we have a rotary readers program Rotary Readers Program. Yeah, uh, every month we have a group of our Rotarians that go to Waikiki Elementary School and read to the kindergartners. You know, it's a, it's a well-known fact that uh, uh, when you read to children, 
especially when they're very young in, in you know, uh, kindergarten and that kind of stuff, by the time they're in third or fourth grade, if you read to them on a regular basis, their vocabulary increases uh, by 400%. So that's an amazing what, what you're doing with those. What else are you doing? Uh, let's see. Also, uh, we, we do a, we, a dictionary project. We've uh, really stepped up our, uh, our, our number of schools uh, for the dictionary project. Uh, this year, we've done nine different schools. We've given over 800 dictionaries to third graders. Well, what's the purpose of, of giving a dictionary to, to kids? Uh, dictionaries, um, it in, increases their vocabulary. You know, it not only teaches them uh, the words, but the dictionary itself is, 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 is a wealth of knowledge. There's not only the definitions of words, they can look up uh, many other different things that are in that, that particular book. And uh, getting dictionaries to the third graders is such a perfect age because they're, they're at, at, at the age to where they're just glued to everything that you say and they just want to learn, they want to they engage you and they, they just get really excited about having their own personal book that they've never owned uh, their own personal book before. And that's, that's a great point. Uh, many uh, children here in the state uh, have never owned a book of their own and, and I think we've experienced that where um, children come up to you and, 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 and say how exciting it is to have their very first book. Very cool. What else uh, um, have you let, been doing? Let's see. Actually, this month, next week, we have an annual garage sale that we do. Um, I believe this is going to be our ninth year doing this annual garage sale. Um, it, it's going to be for the Waikiki Elementary School. So we collect all of the items, uh, not, not only from our Rotary Club, but you know, people that we know, people, uh, people in the community. We, and then all of the proceeds go directly to the Waikiki Elementary School, which they use for their programs uh, for uh, kids that can't afford to go on field trips or kids that can't afford lunches. That sort of thing. Sounds like you've adopted Waikiki Elementary School. Are they? Are they, Do you have a special relationship with them? Uh, yes, we have done um, a, a lot of things for the Waikiki Elementary School, and uh, I think we have kind of adopted that school, and uh, they love us there. I bet. I bet. Absolutely. So, what other um, uh, items have you done with Waikiki Elementary? Is there any? Um, uh, service projects that you've done there. I, I've I've heard uh, uh, s some some things about Waikiki Elementary and their work with aquaponics and uh, uh, gardening and that kind of stuff. Are, are you involved in that as well? Well, we did um, recently um, do a uh, tree plant tree planting event there. We we planted, uh, I believe, uh, one tree for every Rotarian that we had in our club. Wow. And also, um, at the same time, we did a painting project where we repainted all of the, you know, the poles that get scuffed up. Yeah, yeah, right. There's a lot of maintenance work that needs to be done, so mm -hmm. um, you've saved them an enormous amount of money as well. Anything else that, uh, as far as uh, youth service that you'd, you'd like to, to share with our viewers? Uh, youth service, um, well, we do have a special relationship with one of our sister clubs in Japan where we send one of the students from Waipahu High School over to Japan for a month, and then also, in return, we, we get one of the students from, from their schools for a month. Sister clubs. I'm aware of the sister club program within Rotary, and many of our, our clubs do have uh, sister clubs. Talk about your sister clubs and Waikiki Rotary and, and how that benefits our community. Well, we actually have a lot of sister clubs. Uh, we have six sister clubs in Japan, uh, two sister clubs in Taiwan, and one in Thailand. Um, and sister clubs uh, are a really great relationship. We get to know um, other uh, members of uh, clubs uh, that are outside of our district, and we get, we get to um, collaborate with them. So do you like have Rotarians from your sister clubs come and, and visit your club? And do you send Rotarians there in an effort to un, uh, create greater understanding uh, between Rotary clubs and between our communities? Yes. Is that we, kind of the idea? Yes, we do actually have um, uh, actually a big delegation from uh, our sister clubs coming to our annual uh, fundraiser that we do. Uh, 
So, so with your sister clubs uh, in Taiwan have, uh, or uh, in Japan, have you done uh, other service projects with them, or is it more of a friendship relationship? Um, right now, uh, it is actually mostly a friendship relationship, but we have actually done, um, uh, la two years ago, we did a global grant project through the District 5000, uh, where we went to Taiwan and helped out the uh, rural uh, indigenous community in southern Taiwan. And one of our sister clubs, uh, Kaohsiung Central, uh, came down and helped us out with that. So you went on that service project to I did. Yangon. I did. Tell, tell us a little, a little about your, your experience, your travel. Um, it's another great thing about Rotary is uh, the opportunity to, to travel and provide service to other parts of the world in rural communities. It's a really great eye-opening experience. Um, I've, I've never, never got gotten to experience things like that, and, and uh, you know, it really changes changes you, the way the way you see life and the way you look at the world. So the Yangon project was a literacy project, water and sanitation. I mean, there's so many things that we do in Rotary yes. uh, in terms of our six areas of focus and, and the services that we provide. What was the specifics about the project that you went on? Uh, the project I went on was a two-part project. Uh, the first part was we went to Myanmar and helped out the, mon the monastery schools, uh, the monastic schools. Um, uh, part of a teacher exchange program to send teachers to the monastery schools and to teach them English and to, to have them teach their children and how to retain knowledge and, and to go forward. And then also while we were there, we did uh, help them out with a sanitation project to uh, redo their restroom facility. Uh, it was in really dire conditions uh, and, you know, with a school that had, you know, over 700 kids, they only had six stalls and a and a failing septic system so we put our money together and we hired local contractors to come in and demolish the whole thing and give them a bigger septic system and then in, in, um, increase the number of stalls so wow. now they have i believe five stalls for the girls and five stalls for the boys and a wash station wow that's amazing mm -hmm. it's amazing um what partnerships do you have in the in the local community? Is there other specific groups that you choose to work with? Um, I, I know that you worked with uh, Kahawiki and uh, uh, last year and uh, uh, with the homeless uh, out uh, in the airport area. Um, is there what other uh, organizations do you work with or maybe you'd like to talk a little bit about uh, homelessness and uh, your work with Kahawiki? Um, well, our work with Kahuliki um, was mainly a, like a painting and construction project. And me being a painter, um, I, I personally went down there and I, I, I painted a few of those units. And uh, uh, there was also gardening that, that our, our members did uh, for there. And uh, also um, another, another project that we're working on right now is uh, part of our your district uh, project, which is uh, working at the Serenity Gardens out in on the North Shore at the for Ho'olanapua. Great. The, well, let's take a break for a couple minutes, and we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit about Ho'olanapua and the uh, issue of human trafficking um, and what we're doing on the North Shore. Okay. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Aloha. This is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week. Mondays at 3, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world, and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. We welcome you to tune in, and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there, and we have an awesome uh, studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at 3 o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. Aloha. I'm Yukari Kunisue, the host of Konnichiwa Hawaii, Japanese talk show on Think Tech Hawaii. Konnichiwa Hawaii is all Japanese broadcast show and is streamed live on Think Tech at 2 p.m. every other Monday. 
Thank you so much for watching our show. We look forward to seeing you then. I'm Yukari Kunise. Mahalo. Aloha and welcome back to Rotary in Hawaii, People of Action. And it sounds like the Rotary Club of Waikiki is filled with people of action. We've been talking with president of the Rotary Club of Waikiki, Stephen Morgan, about some of the service uh, that his club does in our local community. Um, and he mentioned before we took a break of uh, the issue of human trafficking, which is near and dear to, to my heart and uh, uh, our focus for the district for the year. Um, and we've been working with Ho'ola Napua uh, on a service project on the North Shore to create a serenity garden for survivors of human trafficking in, uh, within our community. So Stephen, um, Ho'ola Napua uh, has been working on a property uh, to uh, provide facilities for survivors of human trafficking. And human trafficking is a significant issue uh, in our community, and I appreciate your, your efforts uh, and your club's efforts to uh, tackle the, the problem and provide uh, uh, some facilities. The Serenity Garden uh, is intended for uh, use to provide an area where um, people who have uh, been involved in human trafficking and are now out of it, especially young uh, girls uh, have a place to meet with counselors, have a uh, place to do yoga and that kind of stuff. And it involves clearing more than two acres of uh, land that is, uh, was overtaken with uh, grasses and weeds and uh, trees and all kinds of things. Um, tell me about your experience uh, and your club uh, is experience at the facility uh, with the, the Serenity Garden. Well, as of right now, it's a work in progress, and uh, we were just there this past weekend clearing out a whole bunch of trees. I went around with a chainsaw, cutting down a whole bunch of trees and clearing brush, and uh, we found a mango tree that nobody even knew was there. Ah. <laughs> Overtaken. <laughs> and and what, what is that? What, I guess what I'd really like to ask you is what does that mean to you? How satisfying is it for you to be part of a project that will uh, benefit people that you'll never meet, to benefit uh, uh, young children who um, have been involved in a, uh, an activity that has stolen their childhood um, and they've survived? And, and now when we get done with this, they'll have a place where they can uh, uh, begin to re be reintegrated into uh, society. What, what does that mean to you uh, personally, I guess? Oh, it, it gives you a real sense of satisfaction and inside, you know, seeing something that's overtaken with, with weeds and brushes to, to take it and, and, and you get the, the instant satisfaction seeing a tree come down <laughs> and, 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 you know, clearing, a, clearing an area and then after the day is over, you look back and like, wow, you know, this, this, is, this is something that can actually happen and, you know, to, to look into the future and, and to see kids in there and, 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 and planting things and, and, you know, getting on with their lives and not thinking of the, the horrible things that's happened to them in the past. Yeah, that's uh, that's an important aspect, I think, of, of, of what we do. Uh, so much of uh, our service to humanity, to, to other people, involves people that we'll never meet. They'll never be saying thank you to us. Uh, but we, we do it because uh, we can and because we uh, uh, love what we do. Um, Let's talk a little bit about your club. Uh, how many members in, in your club, and what's the, what's the diversity? What, what is it that, uh, in terms of, I guess, professions and, and that kind of stuff? Let's, let's talk about the business of Rotary. Uh, well, uh, glad you mentioned that. Uh, our club is really diversified in, as far as age and race and you know, gender. Uh, currently, we have, I believe, 68 members. We, we, we started the year with, uh, with a little bit more. We've lost some, as, as with a lot of Rotary Clubs, uh, you know, we, 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 we gain and lose some throughout the year. But uh, as, as, as far as the diversity, we, we've got a really uh, good uh, mix of professions to where we can look to other people in, in our club as far as, oh, as, as far as realtors and financial advisors. And, you know, uh, we, we recently 
inducted a member who's a florist. No. So, uh, you know, that's it's a good connection there. And uh, you make a lot of good business contacts. Okay. You guys have any fun? We do have a lot of fun. <laughs> we, we are known as the Friendly Club. The Friendly Club, right? Yeah, so we, 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 we are also a singing club. We sing every week uh, wow. to, to our guests. And uh, we, we try to have a lot of fun. I, you know, I'm trying to have a lot of fun at being president this year. Uh, you know, sometimes it gets a little nervous, and but uh, that, you know, I, I, I think everybody is liking it. Is, is having a good time. Yeah, we, you, we make you, a lot of friends also. You get a lot of you get a lot of visitors, right? I mean, you're in Waikiki, in the center of the of the uh, visitor action, if you will. Uh, you get a lot of visitors. What do you have any notable visitors that uh, you just like? Wow, you know, they came from far, far away. We do actually. Being in Waikiki, we get visitors from all over the world. Uh, you know, Australia, Japan, you know, Europe, you know, South America, what, what have you. The, the, we do get a lot of international visitors that come to our club. I'd like you to take a, a minute, if you will, and talk about your International Food Fest. I know it's your primary fundraiser. But what, what is it that you do with the International Food Fest? How does that, how does that look? What, if you were to describe it to somebody who might be interested in, in participating and coming to it, when do you do it? What, what is it what's involved? Um, as you said, our International Food Fest is our, our annual fundraiser. That is the primary source of funding for our club. Not only does it keep our club running, but it funds all of the, all of the service projects that we do throughout the year. Um, if I were to paint a picture of what it's like, it's a pretty big party. Uh, we have this uh, food from food stations from around the world, and uh, we have silent auction. We have DJ. We have band. We have dancing, uh, but mainly it's a it's a big uh, get together, like a big fellowship of uh, of uh, Rotarians from not only the district, but uh, as I said earlier, we have a big delegation from our sister clubs from you know, Japan and, and, and Taiwan that, that come every year. And they look forward to this event every year. Great, great. So question for you. you um, let's move to uh, our uh, international convention. So Rotary has an international convention every year, uh, 25 to 30,000 people. And our convention this last year was in Toronto, Canada. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, we had uh, one in Atlanta, Georgia, and in Seoul, South Korea. Right. So they're held around the world uh, with uh, exciting activities. And you went to the one in Toronto. Uh, what was that like? I did. And um, as, as I said earlier, through Rotary, I, I've gotten many opportunities to travel. Or, and going to Toronto was one of them, and uh, it, was, it was really great experience uh, going to an international convention, just to see Rotarians from all over the world dressed in their native garb, and uh, you know, just to be able to interact. Uh, we went on a field trip uh, to Niagara Falls, and we got to interact with people, uh, Rotarians from Kenya and, and, and other clubs in Africa, which was really great. Yeah, you know, I want to share a quick story with you because I, I share your enthusiasm for our international uh, convention. I was at the international convention in Atlanta, Georgia, and I sat at a table for lunch. And on my left was a uh, Rotarian from Pakistan, and on my right was a, a Rotarian from, from India. And if you know the, the history uh, of that region of the world, uh, many thousands of years of... Uh, of uh, no peace, of uh, really a combative stance towards each other frequently. Um, I thought that it was absolutely only in Rotary would you find two people from, from the regions of the world sitting down and having lunch together uh, and having a, a dialogue and conversation without it being set up, just a natural gravitation. Um, our, this year we're having our convention in Hamburg. Uh, Germany um, and then next year we're going to have our convention here in Honolulu uh, 25,000 people from or more from around the world will converge here uh, to uh, share peace and, and goodwill and, and conversation and dialogue uh, are you and your is your club involved in in, in any of the planning and uh, for that 
We do have a member of our club, which is, um, I believe, a couple members on our, of our club, which are part of the planning process for the 2020 convention, which mm -hmm. is going to be here in Honolulu. Um, I am also uh, part of a Rotarian Fellowship, which is called the Surfers Unite Rotarian Fellowship, or SURF. Um, where we're trying to recruit members to, uh, to join so where we can have a, a, you know, like an event for the 2020 convention that would be maybe held in Waikiki, uh, like a paddle off for polio maybe type of event. Wow. So surfers, a surfing fellowship. So all you surfers out there who want to engage in uh, surfers from around the world, uh, Rotary is the place for you to come together with them. Stephen, I would like to thank you very much for your uh, participation and your insight this morning uh, as we share about the Rotary Club of Waikiki. Uh, real quick before we wrap up here, Rotary Club of Waikiki meets at... We meet at the Prince, Hotel. Prince, uh, Prince Waikiki Hotel, Wednesdays at noon. Wednesdays at noon. So thank you for joining us uh, once again, and we're thankful to Think Tech Hawaii uh, for hosting this program. Uh, we appreciate the opportunity to engage our community, uh, find solutions to uh, community problems, and then take action. <laughs>